In this video I'll be giving my opinion of the pros and cons of using a zoom lens versus a prime lens for bird photography. All the video and stills are taken at my hide location and I'll be showing how I use a mobile fence for bird photography. You do not need to be a carpentry expert to knock one of these up, just some old wood, a few screws and nails will suffice. Today I'm back at my hide location I'm testing out a new lens. I'm using the Olympus 100 to 400 mm zoom. Don't actually own this lens. I've borrowed it from a friend. Normally, I would use my 300 mm f/4 lens, often with a 1.4 converter. So today, I'm testing this out because there's times when a zoom is a far better option than a fixed focal length lens. There's nothing wrong with the 300 f/4 that I've got often use it with a 1.4 converter and when I do that that will give me the zoom range more or less in fact a little bit more than this will do with the 1.4 on the 300 it gives me 420 mil so why am I actually using this well the reason is there's times when a fixed focal length lens is by far the best option but there are times when a zoom will be a, a fixed focal length lens hands down and this is one of those situations because I'm photographing from a hide and I need to have the option of being able to zoom when you've got a small bird uh, and then a large bird down at the same time. So when I'm walking around a reserve like Minsmere or Strumpshaw Fen or something like that, a fixed focal length lens with a 1.4 converter is often the best option. Usually the birds are further away than, than you'd like them to be. So having the full range is, is, is a great advantage. You don't often sort of need a zoom in those sorts of situations. But when you're in a hide and the, the setup is a certain distance away from the hide, the problem that you have is that if you have a small bird come down with a fixed focal length lens, and you've framed up on that that's fine but then if a large bird comes down you won't get it all in you'll cut the tops of the head off at my old location that i had where i had a previous hide i had a two-man hide the advantage of that was that i could have two tripods set up one with the long lens on the 300 mil with sometimes with a 1.4 uh, on the other one I could have 40 to 150 with a 1.4 on. So that gave me the option that I could just sort of, you know, photograph the larger birds on one camera and the other one on the, on the longer lens. In this situation, I've only got a very, very small hide. It's a one-man hide. And here I cannot do that because I can't, don't have the room in this hide to put two tripods. So here I've got the bird bath and it's set up about 9 or 10 foot away from the hide which is over there. Now if I've got a fixed focal length in the hide and I photograph or set it up to actually get it all framed up there for the small birds towards the back of the pond which is more or less where I'm going to photograph them. That's okay because I can frame that up there and I can set it up for the size of a goldfinch, greenfinch, blue tit, great tit there. But then all of a sudden you might have a jay come down or a collared dove or something larger. And in that situation I'm not going to get it all in. It would be too tight in a frame. I'll be cutting the tops of the head off. Even with the small birds. If one lands at the back there and I can actually get it in focus and everything that's fine and framed up. But then one lands here and it's about two foot closer. And here it's going to be a little bit tight. With a zoom lens, you have that option of actually being able to zoom and reframe it. So I focus there at say 400 mil with 100 to 400 on the small birds, but then suddenly a J comes down and I can then quickly zoom out. So since the last video that I did at this location, I've actually built a wooden hide here. The previous hide was the Jamie Woods hide, which is a canvas hide. And during the summer, canvas hides are, are quite acceptable. The trouble in the winter, they can get quite uncomfortable. They're not very warm. A wooden hide is a lot better option. You're out of the wind here. They're waterproof. And also because it's a wooden hide, birds will get used to it a lot quicker. It's here permanently. 
and birds will actually sort of come and accept it very very readily. Unfortunately it's only a one-man hide. My previous location that I had at uh, Ipswich where I had the hide it was a two-man hide. So in that situation the fixed focal length lens was actually a very good option because I could use two cameras. I could set one tripod up and then another one next to it and I'd put the 300mm on one camera body and the 40 to 150 on the other one. And when that happened then if a small bird came down I would use the 300 and then I had a bench and if another larger bird come I could just quickly shift along to the next camera and take those pictures. I don't have the luxury of that here it's only a one-man hide should have really built it bigger but I couldn't get I had to I was constrained by the actual dimensions of the car I had to build it at home bring it here and assemble it and here I've only got one tripod I can't get two in really so I find that I really do need a zoom in this sort of location or situation in this hide I'm using scrim netting but it's not just ordinary scrim netting it's what's called clear view scrim netting the important thing is that I can actually see all around through here often as not with ordinary scrim netting you have a little patch where you can look through but with this I get an all-round view of it and the advantage is I can see out quite fairly clearly but the birds can't see in but the important thing with clear view netting scrimming is you've got to have a dark background if you've got a light background the birds will still see you so I've actually painted the back of the hide black and the, the far side over there very dark green so I can sit in here and I can see out quite clearly but the birds can't actually see in there and that's a big advantage so what I'm photographing the birds on today is this mobile fence uh, a friend of mine Jim made this for me although I have made them myself in the past the big advantage of this is that it's mobile I can pick it up and move it it's on spikes on the bottom so I can actually bring it forward if I want to a few foot or I can move it a few foot back using the 100 to 400 that's roughly about the right size that I can I can use it for distance from the hide and it's probably about 15 foot away viewed from this position you can see that there's a, a groove or a, a channel along the top of it and in this channel I can put a mixture of food for the birds I can put pe crushed peanuts, um, bird paste, sunflower hearts, whatever I like really. And from the viewpoint of the hide, you can't actually see that channel there where the birds are coming in there. They're quite used to coming in because I've got some fat ball feeders quite close to it um, and also a seed tray on the bird feeder. So the birds will actually come in there quite happily. And I, and I can get some good shots. You'll see from this viewpoint at the back that on the actual legs of the fence I've got some plastic drain pipe. The advantage of that that you can put perches, branches, twigs, that sort of thing into there and you'll often find the birds when they fly to the fence they'll land on the branch first which always gives you a good chance to get some natural looking pictures. You can see with this clear view scrim netting it gives me an all round view. Birds can't see inside but I can see out fairly clearly. And certainly it's a big advantage on the old type of scrim netting that I used to use. So now I'm going to show some images taken with the 100 to 400 mil lens and give my own impressions of the lens in comparison to my own 300 mil f4 prime lens. The images are all taken with the EM1X camera body and the camera and lens are mounted firmly on a tripod. Consequently I cannot comment on how it would perform handheld although I would expect it to produce very good results. At the 400mm end of the zoom you would need reasonable lighting conditions to produce fast enough shutter speed because the aperture would be 6.3. The image stabilising on all Olympus Pro Lens work in conjunction with the image stabilising in the camera body. 
as the 100 to 400 is not a pro lens the camera body's image stabilization will not work with this lens basically this means that when using the 100 to 400 the image stabilization in the lens works but will not work in conjunction with the camera body therefore you will often need to push up the ISO slightly to obtain a fast enough shutter speed if using this lens handheld. When using the 300mm prime lens, both the lens and the camera body's image stabilisation work together, which enable you to photograph at slower shutter speeds and still obtain pin sharp images when hand holding. Although this lens is not a pro lens, it certainly has a pro's feel about it. The zoom action is very smooth and the lens feels well made. It is also light enough to carry around all day without the need for a tripod. Optically, I cannot see any difference between the results of either lens, but I was using the 100 to 400 in a hide on a tripod. So which is the better option? As I explained in the opening section, there are times when the zoom is by far the better option whereas there will be times when the Prime is the best option. It's really a case of horses for courses. Although the zoom is the better option in my hide, the 300mm f4 is the better option when walking around a reserve and stalking birds. I can add the MC14 1.4 converter to the 300mm to give me 420mm at f5.6. I can also add the MC20 2 times converter to 300mm to give me 600mm at f8. Although both the 1.4 and the 2 times converter will work on the 100 to 400mm, they then become f9 with the 1.4 and f13 with the 2 times at the full focal length. This means you would only be able to get a fast enough shutter speed to avoid camera shake in very good lighting conditions. As a straight 100 to 400, it's fine though and will produce very sharp results as I hope these images show. So will I buy this lens? To be honest, I'm not sure yet. The 100 to 400 f5 to 6.3 retails at just under a thousand pounds, which is amazing value for a lens of that focal length range. The 300mm f4, which I already own, retails at double that price at 2499 The ideal lens would be the 150-400mm f4.5 with the built-in 1-point converter. This is a pro zoom lens and at £6,500 it comes with a pro price and I'm not sure if I can really justify that expenditure. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please check out my other YouTube videos and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.